Welcome to the Statistic NDD YouTube channel. Today we want to see how we can profile a block of R code to identify a bottleneck, part of the code that runs slowly um, to see where we might want to optimize our code to get better run times. To start off I'd like to share a quote with you. Um, it was popularized by Donald Knut. It's old from 1974 but I think it's still valid today and he said um, premature optimization is the root of all evil, or at least most of it, in programming. So how can we understand that? When you set out to solve an R problem in data analysis or programming, um, don't think of optimization from the start. You might end up writing complicated code or code that is hard to read or hard to debug, hard to explain to your colleague maybe. Um, rather, um, set out to solve your problem first, keep your code as simple as possible and as readable as possible, and then you can profile it and if it runs too slowly you can then go about optimizing just the bottleneck and not the whole code to keep it simple. Right, um, I've done previous videos for example a comparison of data table and dplyr and dtplyr and I used benchmarking to compare runtimes and also I looked at some um, ways of running R code in parallel and I also used benchmarking there I used to work with a benchmark package and now I recommend the newer bench package but for today's task this would be um, not the best solution because I would have to do several benchmarks to compare several functions and today I want to introduce you to a different tool profiling where I can profile a whole block of code at once with, without programming several um, benchmarking functions. Right, uh, what is the task we are trying to solve today? Uh, well, I create some random data here, a uh, random y variable, a dependent variable, and then 16 groups. Um, the data set um, comprises of 2 million rows. And then I create 100 random variables x1 to x100 using the replicate function. And I built in some sort of correlation to the y variable here. Right, um, and then I determine the strongest correlation between any of these 100 x variables and the y variable and I use that um, mostly correlated variable to create scatter plots x and y and then I want to add smoothing lines to the scatter plots to illustrate trends and now there are various ways of doing that. I can create a linear model of course, a simple um, straight line, but there are also options to get nonlinear relationships. So I can use the lowest function, locally weighted scatterplot smoother. The older function was spelled with a W for locally weighted scatterplot smoother. Um, the newer function is the same idea but spelled a bit differently and different defaults are used, lowest. Um, so locally weighted um, slopes. So I get different slopes in different parts of the range of values. So I can model nonlinear relationships and there's a span parameter that determines the degree of smoothing. And my theory is that um, the span parameter influences run times or the effort um, for calculating these lines. So I try out different span parameters in lowest um, and also use an auto method which uses a more advanced model, a GAM model, and we also use a simple linear model which should calculate um, fastest because there's just one slope that is constant for the whole range of values. I can show you this graphically quickly. So this is um, a linear model for the 16 subgroups. We see that the slopes differ slightly due to random because it's simulated data. Yeah, it's all straight lines. And then we have a lowest function with the default span parameter. So um, nonlinear relationships here. And then I increase the span parameter for more smoothing and then I use a low span parameter 0 0.1 um, and we get much more weekly lines and um, also larger confidence intervals um, indicated by the gray shadow and this is the advanced generalized additive model that also gives us nonlinear relationships but it's not as weakly at the, at the edges so it's a powerful method. So my theory is that these span parameters and, and different models influence runtimes. So how can I measure that? Um, in the code you see that I use this profvis call. Um, I'm not going to run the code now because it would take too long and it would make the video boring waiting for that. 
Um, I pre-calculated that and here we get the profile. Um, but yeah, I, I put it in the code here to make obvious what is happening, but um, profiling is also supported by RStudio. So you can just highlight part of your code and use the profile menu and profile selected lines. So you don't even have to put this profits in your code. So it's really well supported. So let's look at the profile. Um, we start out with a flame graph and this is a quick way of determining our bottleneck. Um, it has a minimum interval of five milliseconds. We can lower the interval, but then we get a warning that measurements may not be accurate. So it's not recommended to, to go below five milliseconds. So we have five milliseconds to calculate this random Y variable for two million cases. And then the data simulation takes a, a lion's share of execution time, as we can see here, 350 milliseconds to generate these random variables. And as I go down, you see that only twice we see five milliseconds, once for the correlation and once here for one ggplot call. And the other ggplot calls are so close to that um, minimum interval that they don't even get numbers here. So the quick answer to my question is that um, the span parameter and the different methods to generate these smoothing lines are not the bottleneck at all in this code. The bottleneck is really only data simulation. So um, I could have wasted a lot of time um, benchmarking these different methods, but they are not the bottleneck. The bottleneck is here um, when I simulate the data. So these profiles can be saved. You don't have to run them live. You can save them and load them again in a different R session uh, or send them to colleagues, whatever. Um, and there's also a data tab, so we can get a numeric summary. And here you see as well uh, where the time is lost. The replicate function um, takes a lot of runtime here. And you see that GM Smooth only appears right at the bottom with a very small fraction of runtime. So it's not the bottleneck. And also here in this lower part, um, you see it's, it's an HTML widget. It's interactive, so I can have a look at different functions and get more information there. Um, runtime and also memory consumption, memory that was taken up and memory that was set free again. And you see here that this um, Geom Smooth is very hard to find because it's just the last fraction of the runtime that goes into that function. Right, that was it. I hope you find this tool profiling your R code useful. I hope it helps you. Um, identify bottlenecks and not waste time on optimizing code that um, is not so relevant in terms of runtimes. All the best for your R projects. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps. Thank you. See you next time. Goodbye.